Alright. Hey guys, um, it's Alex, and, um, I figured I would start a, um, series of videos called The Orchid Chronicles. This will be our pilot, our episode one. Um, I have a couple of my orchids kind of just chilling with me. Um, I should mention very quickly, I'm not going to do anything right now where I go around and show my collection only because most of my stuff is outside in two different locations. I have a few of my lower light level orchids inside with me just so that they don't get sunburned and all that. Um, you know, it's still summer. I still want things to get as much photosynthetic activity as I can. Um, so I figured I'd just do a quick introduction to what this video series is going to be about. Um, I haven't really figured out frequency, maybe weekly or, you know, at a certain frequency and then when something notable happens I can make a video. Um, videos may vary in length. Um, I'm not an expert grower. I study biology. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in biological sciences. I'm going on to get a master's in um, ecology and biological science. I um, am at the University of Rhode Island, in case you didn't know that. but. Um, I may or may not be moving in the coming months, depending on a couple of factors. I kind of just figured out that I won't be making as much money because of a rule that grad students had to follow. But anyway, um, that's part of why I'm not going to do a gallery walk, if you will, of my orchid collection. Um, but I do have a lot of orchids. Um, my favorite orchids are members of the Oncidium or um, Cattleya alliances. Um, and when I say alliances, I mean groups of species in different genera, as well as hybrids, not only intra, but intergeneric hybrids. I have several Oncidium and Cattleya um, intergeneric hybrid type things, um, not between each other, that probably wouldn't work, but um, I have like some BRRA, BLRIA, um, some Brassio Cattleya and um, Laelo Cattleya and whatever those other things are, you know, the related genera have been crossed with one another. Um, some really interesting stuff that I will get into later on. Um, I will get into my tissue culturing. Um, I kind of do a lot of this stuff on the side. My main science work is with the Lepidoptera, um, particularly how they respond to the third predation and um, deal with host plant mediated um, mortality, things like that. Um, you have your bottom up controls like, you know, food quality, plant defense, um, and available nutrients in water level. Um, I'm doing an experiment with a blueberry pest on that right now, but um, I also work on top-down control, you know, predation, parasitism, the um, effects that the signals released by these threats to these insects may cause um, mortality and other things. So I'm doing a bunch of stuff there. Um, I'm kind of a plant hoarder. I don't just have orchids. I have a whole bunch of other things. I have um, tropical fruiting trees like avocados and guavas. I have temperate deciduous trees. Um, I have a couple of lilac seedlings that are taking their sweet old time to grow lilacs and some other oleaceous plants grow very slowly. Although um, for Suthia and Privet, which are also in the oleaceae, grow very, very quickly. Um, it really just depends. Um, it's one in one extreme or the other with the oleaceae, I swear. Um, I have a few of the bromeliaceae, like a pineapple and a couple of bromelia things. I have um, some nice assortment of various tropical low light things. I do grow tomatoes. Um, I, you know, just grow a whole bunch of random stuff just for fun. Sometimes for scientific work, I also have a um, bog garden. Well, it's two kiddie pools now because of how many things I have, but um, I have a variety of pitcher plants. I really love the um, Saracenia leucophila and its associated hybrids. Um, I love Saracenia morae, which is Flava crossus leucophila. I also really do like Flava and Alata um, and Purpurea. I um, basically leave those plants outside until Thanksgiving time. Then I'll stick them in an attic or a cold room where they'll be very nice and chilly, but it's not going to be bitter wind, New England type killing weather. And um, I have a couple of sundews. I like the really narrow leaf sundew things like Drosera filiformis and Tracei. Um, and I also have a clump of um, intermediate growing. Um, so kind of my plant collection is far and wide. I um, work in a lab on campus. I have a couple of my plants there right now. We're getting greenhouse space. Yes. Um, 
I have a research farm area where I keep some of my things, both research and non-research related. Um, they don't really care if I have my own stuff as long as I'm getting my work done and not taking up too much of anybody else's space. And since I'm not doing either of those things, they're not going to come after me. But I do try to, you know, not be totally obnoxious. Um, I have a bunch of what I call rescue orchids, which are A, plants that I've propagated out from um, really poorly grown orchids. I'm looking right now at my window sill over here. Um, you can't see it from this view, but I'll show it later. It's some oncidium type thing that somebody had growing in terrestrial media, and it's an epiphyte. Um, so its roots were rotting. So I plucked off a healthy pseudobulb, and now it is growing very wonderfully. Um, I have some cymbidiums. Um, they're really cool plants, although they are quite cumbersome. Um, I propagated a few of those off from back bulbs. I have a few phalaenopsis. I'm not the biggest fan of phalaenopsis. It's not that I hate them, I just think they're a little bit of a boring, too normal type of orchid. Um, I really like the dendrobiums and, you know, their cane forms and the way their flowers look. I really like the, um, Cattleyas and oncidiums with their, you know, round pseudobulbs, and I like the leaves of some of these plants. I have some axillarias. I really like the grass-shaped orchids, um, and I also like some of the broadleaf terrestrial orchids. I have a few paphiopodillums. I have a, um, Microphaeus or Macrophaeus, whatever it is, um, really nice plants. Becoming a very large plant. I'm looking at it right now. Um, I have some jewel orchids. Those are really cool. Um, I had a Herala retrocala, but sadly a slug ate over the summer. Um, I have Latilla. I really do, do like some of these temperate ground orchids. I'm trying to grow some superpediums. I'm hoping to get some superpediums from breeders and things like that. Um, I do try to be very careful about um, not causing damage to local wild orchid populations. I have a couple of good Yara that my friend dug up. Um, to be fair, they were on private property that they were going to clear, um, so she kind of rescued them. I, when I say I have rescue orchids, I have phalaenopsis, like this very large, beautiful phalaenopsis that, um, they sold for like a dollar at Stop and Shop because it was done blooming, and people generally think, oh, it's done blooming, it's worthless now, and, you know, a lot of these things... I appreciate the foliage more than I appreciate the flowers, and there are some that the flowers are more enjoyable than the foliage, but um, there are a variety of different things. You know, there's an orchid for everybody because the family is very large. There are orchids that come from most parts of the world. They can occupy various niches. There are species that live high up in the trees. There are species that live on rocks. There are species that live in the ground. Um, some species need a lot of light, some species need very little light, some species love wet feet, if you will, you know, being soaked constantly, some species need to dry between waterings, or even have a dry period. Um, indoor orchids of mine usually get watering every two weeks, although if I notice that it starts to dry out too quickly, I'll give it a little bit extra water, actually I should water my path that's not in sphagnum moss. Um, as I go along in this series, I'll point out kind of the medias I use and what I do with things and how I have things growing. This is just an intro, obviously. Um, I don't want to go on a long rant, but I do want to thoroughly kind of introduce, you know, my orchid hoarding habits and my love of some of my plants. Actually, I don't know why this guy has really deep striations on its leaf. Um, it feels pretty wet. I've had this growing outside all summer. Um, during the winter, a lot of my things get a nice big bright LED bulb, or I keep them in an ornamental greenhouse so that they stay properly lit. Um, obviously, the phalaenopsis and jewel orchids and some of my other terrestrials don't need um, a lot of light. Um, I don't say other terrestrials to me that fowls are terrestrial or not, but um, I am doing some orchid breeding. I am not satisfied with just growing things out for the sake of growing things out. I want to breed things and challenge myself and do a whole bunch of fun stuff. Um, I taught my, well, I practiced a lot of tissue culturing stuff before I actually started tissue culturing. Despite that, I still got contamination. I will, actually I should be the outline right now. Um, in case you haven't noticed, I don't have very good video editing software, and I don't have a lot of know-how with YouTube, so this video is just going to be me talking to the camera and then uploading it from my phone. I don't have um, 
really the stuff to make it a nice professional video, but you know, it's still information. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, I like um, to do fun, intellectually stimulating things. And so, orchids are plants within the family Orchidaceae. It's the second largest family of plants in the world, containing about 20,000 to 30,000 species and many man-made hybrids, um, both intra- and intergeneric, um, found all over, like I've said. Um, they are cultivated usually for their flowers. They have a certain appeal to them. A lot of orchids, like the Phalaenopsis, can be um, propagated fairly easily um, in large numbers. Um, Phalaenopsis is a good kind of classic orchid that people have known about and used for such a long time. A lot of the methods for culturing is based upon Phalaenopsis culture. Um, it's kind of just the model species for building all sorts of stuff, and then they just keep modifying things. Um, when I get deeply into talking about tissue culture, which won't be in this video, I promise, um, but it'll be later, I'll talk about the different media formulations, what you can do at home, what I do. Um, I have gotten Phalaenopsis, so this Phalaenopsis has a seed pod on it, as you can see right here. Um, I just harvested another seed pod off of this one, and I have another one that... Um, is a deeper magenta color. I um, call it the Maroon 5 orchid because it's maroon and I really like Maroon 5. I also like the color of this orchid. Um, I cross them with each other. Um, unfortunately, I lost the genetics of my Trader Joe's orchid, if you will. I bought a small Phalaenopsis from Trader Joe's um, and then I pollinated this orchid with one of its pollinia. Unfortunately, all those protocoms protochorms died. Um, I did get them to protochorm and everything, but when it came time to replay, I had a little bit of contamination. In the process of trying to decontaminate, I accidentally killed my um, protochorms. Um, I bleached them, and the bleach is probably too strong. Basically, um, it's better to have a long soak in a dilute bleach solution because um, the mold and fungus is a little bit more resistant to entrance of the bleach into the cells. The plant tissue is softer, if you will. So um, it takes a higher concentration of bleach to kill a plant cell, but because it's a tissue cultured plant, the plant cells take up that bleach first. So if you use the um, concentration of bleach that can't kill the plant and you soak it for longer, you won't kill the plant, you won't get it accumulating in the plant, but it'll be at a concentration that can kill the mold, but it just takes longer. Now I know this, so next time. But what I did was I made, you know, kind of test medias and test containers um, to do it. Um, I'm running out of video time on my phone. I have a whole lot of saved stuff. So what I'm going to have to do is upload this video and um, then make more videos But um, after I delete it. But, you know. Um, so I'll get into a lot of kind of what I do, what information is out there, what you can do, um, how I grow things, you know, what I've learned about orchids, the diversity of my collection. This is kind of just a personal vlog of my orchid collection at its core. It's just going to be, hey, you guys want to see what my orchids are doing this week, what they look like. It's not going to be anything crazy. I do have, I have read up on some of the scientific literature with the plants, but my main focus area in work is um, butterflies and moths. So I have a lot of know-how on how to cultivate things, and I have a lot of experience with growing stuff. But as far as the scientific grasp of all of this, it's a little bit lower than I feel comfortable um, asserting myself as really a figure or authority on it. So I'm going to stick to what I know. I'm going to stick to kind of what I observe and what is cool and, you know, I'm not going to dabble with, you know, excessively scientific material with plant, with these plants, just because of, um, my limitations as far as my qualifications. Um, and I'll talk about how orchid seeds germinate when I go into my tissue culture setup, just because we're running out of time here and I just want to introduce everything.